Okay, we've been talking about the depletion of oil. And, um, and as we know, oil goes into transportation and, uh, not, oil goes into transportation and coal, natural gas, nuclear, hydroelectric go into electricity. But um, we, our real problem is oil depletion, but one of the things that we can do to help possibly with the creation of hydrogen, which is going to take a lot of energy if we're going to extract it from water, is we need to have plentiful electricity. Now, um, this, this area of development, solar thermal, is very exp uh, exploding, right? It's exploding right now. And um, there are companies that are putting in live systems in the hundreds of megawatts in the Mojave Desert. And the reason they're in the Mojave Desert is they, Mojave and the deserts of the southwest of the U.S. have 300 days of sunshine every year. So the southwestern deserts of the U.S. are a great place to put solar thermal. Solar thermal is not like photovoltaic where you, those are the ones that you put on your roofs of your houses. The sun hits it, silicon chips, and it makes electricity directly. This is 100% this is mechanical engineering. It's just straight ahead, heating water, and our standard steam power plant, turbine, generator, cooling water. This is, this is what we've been doing with coal, natural gas, and, um, and nuclear. So let's go and take a look at two of the systems, two of the people that are out there competing for contracts with Pacific Gas and Electric, and um, just two of their different ideas, and um, you know, kind of where the front edge of this, of this research is. Solel out of Israel um, uses a parabola, and the parabola has a focal point where anything that hits it gets concentrated. And so these guys make a, put a lot of parabolas in a huge array. They rotate them and track the sun. And right now there's a, a project that's already implemented a decade ago in a place called Kramer Junction in the, in the desert and they're generating 150 megawatts off of a solar thermal system. Now this system has a backup natural gas um, heater and you use the natural gas um, for nighttime, cloudy days, or peak loading when you when you when the, all the elect, uh, air conditioners are on on a hot afternoon, you can run your natural gas. Now the California regulations are you can only run 25% of the total energy coming out of a system on natural gas. So um, these systems, they have to be a hybrid design and it's mostly got to be solar thermal. Okay, so we got Solel doing parabolas and then we've got Osra, which just got $40 million in VC financing and they're doing a project with PG&E. And here, what you have are instead of a parabola, you've got linear, you've got flat mirrors, and you track the sun only on one axis, so there's less tracking um, costs. And what happens here is you have the sun hitting your mirrors, and they're in one in one case they f they shoot the the rays to this uh, tube, in which is carrying a fluid, either an oil or a water or they go and bounce it to a neighbor. And this, this back and forth um, technique uh, lets, the, lets the mirrors be packed closer together because they don't have to have, they don't have to worry about shadows from one another. So they're, 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 not, they're not large objects that have to be spaced far apart. So this lets the mirrors get packed compactly. Um, these are two different designs these guys really talk about costs. They're, they're, we want to get the cost down, and I, I think the converse is to try to use the heat to get the efficiency up. So there's, I, I'm not an expert in the two differences, but this is cost, and this because it's concentrating, it looks like you can, if you get those temperatures higher um, in a steam power plant, that's where you get more efficiency. So let's, let's look at another thing that's um, interesting about these two. 
let's let's draw a box around them either one and um, let's design our steam power plant like we we do all the time and if you've been watching the videos you've got a turbine and then a generator and a transformer and the power lines and we've got uh, coming out of this we've got cooling so you got a cooling which is going to be an issue and I'll talk about that in the next video so you take um, you take your pump this is where you bring the water back you run a pump in and so you run cool water back in through these tubes they're all connected they're all looped and what they're doing now is they're putting in a huge storage tank and they're they're trying to switch over to a water system getting off of an oil system and I don't know the specifics of that but if you put put a huge storage tank full of superheated water when the sun goes down or at night the sun goes down or it, um, or you want to have the power continue beyond the peak load you can you can use this reserve of hot water to expand and then turn into steam and run the and run the turbine so one of the things that a photovoltaic system can never do is have any ability to work through a cloudy system or or beyond peak because the minute the sun stops the the photovoltaics stop in this case we can use mechanical engineering or just heat capacity to accumulate power it's way better than holding electricity which we have to be done with batteries or something but you can use this heat in this storage tank to run this system beyond peak and into the night and that means that when PG&E looks at this system even forgetting about the natural gas component they can look at it and say this is going to be there for the full peak system and they can design for that so it's a really big advantage that comes with solar thermal is this ability to store power in the form of hot water mechanical engineering once again does all the cool stuff in the world that's just me bragging okay so now two challenges we're going to have are over here we've got to we can't just build the stuff in the mojave and power la and san diego we've got to if we're going to do this on a national scale we've got to get this stuff all the way across the country so now we're going to look at more efficient ways to transfer electricity on high voltage lines which is a te technique called um, HVDC high voltage direct current and the other thing we have to do is look at cooling in the desert because um, it's hot and we've got to have a temperature difference to, to make sure that there's a huge delta T delta change in temperature from one side of the turbine to the other and that if you have that huge temperature difference then you have that huge pressure difference which really cranks that turbine and so you always have to have cooling and you're in the desert so this is a challenge so we're going to do something called evaporative cooling which is we're going to basically going to build a tower like we see on nuclear reactors so two more challenges getting it out to the east coast keeping it cool in the desert um, these guys are competing on how to get the many, many innovators out there, a lot of research, a very exciting area, lots of jobs for mechanical engineers. I'll talk about this and this, this and this next.